Hi, yo 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 to the yo 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 and you we beauty made it. Where I was, I was I had not brought myself up uh, to the stage. So run of show number one. I want to thank. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm all messed up right now. Run of show. How many times am I going to say that this morning? Run of show. Oof. Over on X, I want to thank the people that came in to take a look at my Beauty Talks, the one minute on the Etsy chart. I want to thank everyone for coming over and plunking their impression on. Um, I, I got a fair enough impressions that I am going to be trying to give you. Um, yesterday was over the weekly, was doing weekly, the weekly chart. Today I'm going to be doing the daily chart and then we'll just over the week, right? Monday through Friday, at least we'll go do a full condors pass by, by the close of the, the week. Today we'll close it off with the daily, maybe I'll zippity doo dog get a little closer in if I feel that, um, that would be a value to you guys. But the run of show number one is the motivational moment for Etsy shop owners. Then we'll go into the daily stock and a bit of financial news. We will head right into the gift mode persona of the day. We will talk about Etsy on X and what, what the shop owners are doing over on X and then slip right into the thumbnail creation. And today's thumbnail creation is going to be all about black and white. What can we do with just black and white? So looking forward to that as we uh, travel across a full hour. I don't know if you guys like the full hour so much. I think maybe as I get more comfortable um, and just kind of being being more of myself, at least if I kind of know one through five, these are the things that we're going to cover. I'm pretty cool to do that, uh, but you might not, you know, um, you might not be able to handle, you know, 50 minutes or 95 minutes, however long it takes for me to kind of go through uh, the things that I want to be able to share. And that, that's a lot of my issue is me being able to share with you um, what I what I know and what I'm learning and what I want to share that I've learned with y'all. So that's the biggest problem that I have ha always had in coming on to the social platforms live. Uh, I just, you know, for whatever reason, I could have a hundred tabs, make a thousand notes, and I will hit a little bit of an emotional brick wall. Um, and it just like it wrecks me. If you have ever been up against that, let me know about it. I would love to find out your little secret weapon on how you, you know, push through or power through those moments that just uh, abbreviate, um, you know, our value. I don't want to do that anymore because what it really is at the bottom of it is that I really like you, you know, um, when everyone had an answering machine, if you called me, my answering machine would say, it's good to know me. And <laughs> like, it's good to know me because I actually really care about you. Obviously there are moments, right? where we have to stop caring. And there's more to that, the fortune cookie. We have to stop caring so much for now. Because it ends up where you don't have so much left. You don't really know where else to go with it because you're not, you're not getting what it is that you need. And the Maybe this is a good motivational moment for Etsy shop owners because I know, we'll just kind of trans transmutate this a, a little bit. You can have any one little thing come in your way of taking that next step. It is so odd 
especially for creatives that you, I know that you thought in the back of your mind, wow, what if this was to really work for me? How different my life would be if this was really to manifest itself into something that the CEO spoke of many years ago. And that is being able to earn an income to feed and fuel your family. And, and the amount of joy that comes out of that from the creative, that they're, they are actually able to do that as if it's some sort of a surprise. You would think, you know, that we are also renaissance, that we would be supporting the, the, the person that puts so much love into something and that we would almost repel uh, the companies and the people that do not put so much love into something. So I know for a fact that the CEO wants us to achieve and we have to do that with knowing more about what he's up against and acknowledging and honoring what we're up against and what we can do to put those two together. And when I show you more about the art admirer persona and how the company, the art that, that they used on their banner for the art admirer persona and me discovering who that person is, and I am absolutely, well, I don't know why they didn't do a hover link on that art. And I'm wondering if that was, did she not respond to an email? Was she in disbelief? Is this on a carousel of some sort and no one gets this kind of attention? I, ha I, I don't know. But as shop owners, we should know so that we can support those that have reached banner status, let's say, you know. These, the CEO speaks often about the, the million dollar shop owner. And there are many million dollar shop owners on Etsy. But we should know about them, be aware of them, um, want to learn from them, really look and be able to peer into their shop as if, you know, almost like a walking through by a, a brick and mortar. You know, how are they doing that? How is that? How did that all happen? And is that actually going to happen for me? I want to say that since I've been on this, um, especially the, we'll call it YouTube Etsy, right? There's Bitcoin, uh, there's Bitcoin uh, Twitter, and I'm going to call it, it's YouTube Etsy. We are going to shift this a little bit. We really are. And I am going to honor the CEO. I am going to learn about him and from him on how I can be the best Etsy shop owner that I can. That I am willing to be the very best shop owner that's available to me. Learning from other really great shop owners. I do not need to learn that things aren't your way all the way. Most of what we will do as creatives is not have it our way. But if we can be together, mostly getting it our way, then we're just good. Now, is good enough? I see a lot of like, bearing, uh, bearing one's soul, you know, and obviously good enough is not going to cover up those wounds. See, when you're excellent, you have this, you have that five minute buffer that you can, it's like a drawdown in a, in an, in an investment. You can afford the difference between going into horror and staying above water. But when it you're just good enough, you don't have a lot of slip. So when something really shitty happens to you, you will hit hit the you'll hit the the, the shitty part 
and you will just start to slip and fall. And then it just takes that one person. That one really rotten egg of a comment. That one piece of your chat that goes haywire. And you cannot grab on. It's like watching a calf in a, in a um, um, quicksand of mud. It's like that. And it happens in nature and it happens to us as creators. And once you slip underneath the muck and mire, I'm telling you, everyone that's around that whatever it was that happened, they might not even be aware of it. But all of that that happened to you before, I have to use bad words, they will not give an F. They will move on to the next calf stuck in the mud and do their little dirty work and see you slip under and move on. They do not give an F. What I will say to you is that the CEO of Etsy, so far in the two hours of interviews that I've listened to him now, he so cares about your success, we must honor that. And we must put on those glasses of, let me see how he sees his business and let us mirror that. Because it may feel like it's our business, but remember, you are on the land that he owns. So when we're calling ourselves Etsy shop owners, we know damn well that you do not own your shop, but you own you and how the shop is perceived and how the shop manages itself and how the shop manages itself itself with other shop owners and that coercion of doing things great will get the listen of the CEO and that's where change happens see this this fellow knows something about politics do not forget that and maybe you should too you need political reinforcements you need to lobby for the good of the shop owner. There's this incredible part of political PR that is called oppositional research. This is where you go after a really horrible part of the opposition's life, lifestyle, decision-making, and you just attack. That's what you do. We don't want to be like that. Let's try to figure out another way where we can actually motivate each and every one of us, each of the shop owners, and motivate them well under the helm of the CEO. Because if you don't trust them, then I need to see your CV. I need to see your ownership of the stock. I need to see so many things to show me that this is what you really mean. This is just not clickbait. It's just not, you know, some of the stuff I'm listening to, it's just opinion, people. And it's not a very good one. Like, I don't even know how they have stores. I really don't. I want to learn from the CEO. I want to be one, just one with him every single day for a few moments, moments and be motivated by that be motivated by Etsy in doing that so that was the motivational moment for the day (laughs) we'll kind of crunch it all down and see if there's anything there that's really worthwhile and now up for the stock okay we are going to go over to the chart and let's pull her up let's do that Okay, yesterday we took a look, I believe, at the weekly, correct? And now that it's Friday, I should probably really even be a little bit further in, but maybe we'll do two charts today. So this is the daily. And presently, the daily, we are 0.59% up for the daily. 
trading at 65.45. And this gives you a better view of really the volatility of Etsy and how it has been on a downward. Just look at it this way, okay? You can even just, even if you've never looked at a chart before, I know that you know that from the beginning of March 20, this is 2023, this is 2024. So we're going to come over here. This is 2023 over here on the left, okay? This is 2024 over here on the left. So the trade has been what? Here's the high of 2023. The trade is short. Left to right from high to low, the trade has been in a sell-off since 2023. With some areas where superior lows were put in, and there was a rejection of those lows, and then we had price improve. And we could say, well, the lows are not their higher lows, beauty. And so that's where all good, and you know, this is all good. But there are formations that happen in a chart in which there's only a few things that can happen with Etsy. And Responding in this way could happen, as you can see here. Responding in this way could happen. And who knows, maybe um, we'll be part of this revival um, of sorts, of this attitude towards Etsy. And there will be a revival. But I'm going to pull the chart a little bit here so we can see a little bit more about where we are all at. Yesterday, I had spoken about the superior low, March 4th, 2020, of 61.76. That is a pressure low. There's also one down here. I think that's at 40 or 31.69 right here. And that's a quite that's another 50% drop. This more scary part of this is, is the length of time that Etsy stayed. And we'll just start right here, maybe. Maybe this print high at $21. So sub 21, I said sub 10 yesterday. We do not want that to happen. Now that we're playing around with the chart a little bit more, you do not want to see sub 21. And this low right here, this would be 3079. You, we do not want to see that either. However, if that's what needs to happen, then the survival of Etsy can only, it can flatten out. And then, of course, it will come and perhaps have a revival. It's how is that going to happen? I think that one way it can happen is to improve the morale of the shop owner. Improve the morale that is being shared on YouTube. The quote, biggest search engine in the entire world. And when you go over to YouTube and you look up Etsy, which I will do right now. We'll just go, maybe we'll do it together here. And I'm going to read off some of the, the click, what they call clickbait, and they feel that that is worth it for them to get the clicks and views, to say and have these opinions about this company that I do not agree with at all. But this is where we're at. We're trading at 65.19. We're modestly up on the day. Of course, this is a Friday, and uh, the market is closed on Saturday and Sunday. And we will just revisit it on Monday. We'll do the week, and then we'll do um, we'll do a month and a week and a day and a four hour and a one hour, and even get into it more in, in uh, <laughs> where it's really really fun and look at the one minute. But this is our Etsy today. Thank you very much to a trading view and how I got there was let me go to this tab here. This would be the uh, the X tab. XXX. I'll show you how to get here. So you'll see I went to Etsy. Let's make sure I'm sharing. Now let's go. It should have added to the stage automatically. And that is because my branding needs to come down. So let me get that done. And we'll go ahead and hide that for a moment. So here we are.
Um, and we want to go all the way big. So you go to Etsy, you go to top, and the very first thing will be the Trading View El Toro chart. And from there, you go into Trading View right here, and it will give you a one minute chart with volume. So this is what's happening on the one minute. I will share this tab instead so you can see it. So that is how you get into it. I'm going to stop sharing that chart or that tab and go back to, oh, okay, well, that teaches me something there. I'm going to do that. Uh, I did not want to do that exactly because I still want you to be able to see the chart. So hold on. Go here. I should have been able to hold on to. I hit too many buttons. That's all. And there we go there. And bring him up again. Okay. So that's how we go ahead and do that. We're going to then go to the share this tab instead. Let's make sure. Count to three and see it on the screen. Hmm. Okay. And then we want to make a big, 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 big. And that should be there. I guess it's as big as it's going to be because we're not in the chart itself. Okay, so that's all we do. We go Etsy top, that gets you into the chart, no biggie. Then we go to Etsy latest. Etsy latest because we're going to take a look. Uh, early on, we're going to take a look and then we're moving into the interview. But this is just so that you can see how I got to the chart. But we'll take a very quick look and see what Etsy is all about here over on X and what's going on. Three seconds ago. This is what's so cool. Use X. We have a patriotic flag eagle metal art. A, labri a labradorite. Labradorite pendant. A painter. A woman's jacket. Assuming that's vintage. A tie clip. A celestial cooking guide. And we'll only go down a little bit further so that you can see the Danish Bing and Grandal seagull pattern. Some China. A dog toy. Book of Shadows print and so forth and so on. Two minutes ago. Try and take it to three minutes ago. The crochet chicken pattern bundle. And we'll open this up. The crochet chicken. And that's what we have share this tab instead and we'll try and look at just one seller at a time this is a seller preppy owl collar co preppy Co preppy owl collar co she's a five star i think that's a star seller she has an outstanding when i say she i'm sorry about that they have a star uh, an outstanding track record for providing a great customer experience they consistently earned five-star reviews, shipped orders on time, and replied quickly to any message messages they received. We all need to be a star seller. This is a digital download for a crochet pattern, and she's going into that 70% off. I believe this is a, a feature that you can requi re request when you're a shop owner. Remember, we will be launching our shop June 25th, so I'm still learning about the photography and the carousel and descriptions and all of that. I've not gone too deep into all of the settings that you can use on Etsy for sales and such like that. Okay, so that is our um, creator of the day, let's say. And we'll stop sharing. Go ahead and eliminate some of the tabs. And our next bit of business is going to be, what was our next run of show? Our front of show was going to be, <laughs> let me check the volume. Yeah, we're good. Okay. All right. Our front of show. Our next bit is going to be the gift mode persona of the day. Now, what am I going to do about the interview? Let's see here. 
because I already talked a little bit about what I learned from the interview, but you haven't listened to the interview. You have not listened to the interview. So let me go ahead and I took the transcript over to my medium and I was reading uh, the, the YouTube video is kind of a long one, but uh, it's Josh Silverman turning Etsy around evolving e-commerce YouTube. And let me kind of pull it up here on, on the screen and get the transcript up. And we'll do it like we did yesterday. Uh, let's see here. Where do I want to start? Let's see. We're about seven minutes in. We'll start about seven minutes in. And let's go into here. We'll present. Screen share. And here we go. All right. Head to the stage. And get him full screen. Now, is that going to work for me? No, that's not going to work because we need our transcript. There we go. So just like yesterday, here's the interview out of Notable Capital, February 1st, 2021. February 1st, 2021. There are timestamps here that go through. And some of the things that we hear from Josh Sil Silverman in this uh, interview are not that different from the Bloomberg, except for he is among uh, people that he's more friendly with. And I think that he really gave up um, some very interesting things. And I'm going to go to my medium and give you some little rundown here. He was talking about once he was on the board and then he became the CEO in 2017. And he, he's describing what inspired him most about Etsy was the purpose, that it was to fulfill for its customers, which he thought was really unique and powerful, to, oh, let me see how I can explain this because I don't want to read the whole thing, but I think I'll have to. The question was, you worked on eBay and Skype before assuming an executives. So you know what big time looks like. What about the company that studied enough to join initially as a board member in 2016 and then a CEO in 2017? She says, what inspired me about Etsy is the purpose that it fulfills for its customers, which I think is really unique and really powerful. And, you know, I'd say I've had the good fortune or the privilege to be able to come into a couple of companies now and try to unlock value. So he says, what inspired me about Etsy is the purpose that it fulfills for its customers, which I think is really unique and powerful. And he wanted to unlock that and the, the word is just exploit that, explode that, make it become more real for everyone. He goes on to talk a little bit about Skype. And then he says, to talk with my kids or, you know, all of these very emotional moving stories and what my team and I came to was when, when Skype was going up for, uh, from free phone calls and what Skype was really all about. It was about being together when you can't be in the same room. And that turns out to be a really powerful mission. I'm going to stop there for just a moment. It is his desire to unlock the most powerful parts of Etsy. He says, to be a powerful mission, that means more and more as the world is traveling more and is becoming more and more disconnected. And so with that mission in mind, we really pivoted Skype to be about video instead of audio. 
and that unlocked the whole next chapter for Skype. So with that kind of mindset, you know, at Etsy, when I joined, it was about handmade. This is going to be shocking. And I don't think anybody, I don't think there's a market for handmade. I don't think anybody wakes up in the morning and says, I want to buy something handmade and anything will do. Great. They have a mission in mind. I want to buy a gift from my partner. I want to buy something for my living room. This is the mission that people have. They want to buy something for their living room, spruce it up. And this is where Etsy stands out is the opportunity to make things special, which otherwise are commoditized. And it goes on and on. More than likely, this interview we will revisit several times because there's enough in this um, where he's talking about keeping up with the human commerce and how it is that we, and I, I think this is where the gift mode really comes into play and where he might uh, sh shine a little bit more is he's trying to in, uh, define the kind of the human relevancy in Etsy, which does not exist in eBay. And something that Toby has been able to do with, with uh, um, his company is that he's in constantly injecting the humanness. And I do believe that this is kind of where Josh is, spends a lot of his time. How do I support a maker? How do I support a creator? How do I make sure that I know where the world is, is going in terms of automation? Make sure that I know how transform, transforming the nature of work and still being creative, harnessing your creative energy. And how can I see that be you know, uh, rise up and in this, what is, you know, a rather large company now, how can I do that? How can I turn that global? It said, he says, creativity can't be automated. So the idea that you can harness your creative energy and turn that into a global business that you run from your living room is incredibly powerful. And I think that there's real meaning and real purpose in Etsy. And I think that that meaning and purpose is going to become even bigger. As you know, Amazon and you know, Alibaba get ever bigger. So that's where he feels that he's up against. He's these dehumanized, over-automized, over-automated, just the, the gluttony is real. How can I make Etsy the most powerful with what the real purpose of it is and being honest about what the real purpose is? So it's really, it's a fascinating uh, interview. Definitely take a listen to it if you have a chance and we will be pulling more from the interview as time goes on. Okay, our next part of things today is the gift mode persona of the day, which happens to be the art admirer. And we will pull back up the thumbnail and remove that so that you know we saw we built this together yesterday. And remember, we're not after like the most beautiful thumbnail. We're after making sure that we know how to move and motivate the tool itself over at StreamYard. So what you're seeing here is the, the layout. Uh, I'll have to tell you what layout it is at when we're doing the layout for the day, where that, what, what number the layout is. And, um, you know, we're going to learn from the Etsy art admirer. What, who is, who is an art admirer? So we're going to take you over to the Stop Sharing Hymns. And stop sharing a few things here so that we can take you to the Etsy art admirer. And because I got him incognito, 
we want to share him incognito, okay? So give me a moment here, I'm gonna share the screen. And we're going to share the art admirer. Oh, the art admirer. And this should be, okay. And bring him up to the stage and take the thumbnail down. Goodbye, thumbnail. You won't see the thumbnail ever again, guys, until we rotate back to the art admirer. You've been fun. Thank you so much. We are moving on. So here we are at the landing page of the art admirer. Beautiful banner, solid color block. And then there's the art on the right. We have no idea who created that art, who that art was from. And we are about to find out and dig down. I have the artist, found the artist, and they are on Etsy. And we need to praise and honor them because they, they reflect the... You might be able to say like the new or the trend of the art admirer. So even though an art admirer is someone that it, it has some sort of knowledge, right? Historical knowledge, has art history, they've done color theory, they've been collecting art, um, they hang around artists, they go to a lot of gallery openings, they go to museums, they know and they are involved in the art world. So even though the art admirer, the way that it's described here and how it reflects to the little painting um, is really the trend of the art admirer. Because in this case, this artist does what are called faceless portraits. And they're very highly sought out and very trend worthy. So let's go into, we're gonna Jimmy down here. The art admirer is for the person with the keenest eye for creativity. So when you are building out your shop, of course, what you would hope to do is to be put on this carousel. But the art admirer would be people that are looking for botanical prints, handcrafted ceramics, wooden art pieces, abstract paintings, mixed media art, and therefore. Then below that, do not remember, at, we are looking at this as a shop owner, as a shop owner. We will have plenty of time to look at things from the buyer's perspective. But Etsy is already giving us a little bit of a legs, a leg up because they know how people are shopping. They know right today, this moment, the item that you should make that will sell. So we have to be really willing to just look at this from two parts. One is a shop owner. Um, honestly, I have to divide your brain up a little bit. And the other as a persona your shopper. Related inspiration for the art admirer are also personas. These are all personas. You will know a persona by this placard that they're using here, where everything is the same. This arch on a color block with a picture with it with the name of the persona. So related inspiration would be the painter, the Londoner, the vintage hunter, the history buff, and the Parisian. But even further down from that, what's their style? Like, how do you, so you, 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 you might not even know, know this at all, but Etsy does. Their style is the cottage core lover, the unicorn obsessed, the 90s kid, the coastal grandma, and the goth. What is, what's their style? So actually, um, really, we're going to have so much fun, honestly. Like I, I, we are going to have a lot of fun exploring all of these personas. 
at the end, when we get through all the personas, you are going to know straight away that your item or items fit inside of this persona. And you are going to, this is a good word in this case, you are going to exploit it and have your shop expand and understand why you're choosing your colors for your photography, why you are focused on certain shapes, certain feel of your, of your items, and the whole thing. And all of a sudden your shop is going to start becoming more elevated because now you know. And in fact, the art-inspired persona, according to Etsy, has even yet a further layer of themselves. Do they like sports? Yes, because they're basketball fans. They're rock climbers. They're fishermen. They're fanatics over their fitness. And then it goes back to their, the, their sports fans. And you can see the arrow. It even goes further and further and further down. Remember, gift mode is for the shopper. So they think. Gift mode is for the shop owner to be able to fulfill the desires of the shopper. You've got to be thinking in that way. Etsy chose this artist, and that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to stop sharing this uh, tab, and I will show you who this brilliant artist is today and give them some loving. Okay. Bring that down and let's go visit Sag Moon Paper Co. Oh, ho. <laughs> Sag Moon Paper Co. All right. Now, I hope I didn't uh, X out of. I don't see my picture up here anymore, Sag Moon. Okay, we might have to do it again. Share screen. And Topaz, is that right? Yeah, that's right. There we go. Okay, and there you go. Okay. This is Sag Moon Paper Co. Yes, they have a real name. And yes, they are a very fine artist. We want to read about this kind of art. So this is Topaz Black Cottage Core, printable wall art. Remember, she's using all of the, in her description, she's using all of the tags. She is a five-star seller. And we're just going to call the the, <laughs> the shop is a five-star seller. Sag Moon Paper Co. is the company. It is a digital download. So all of the thumbnails that you see on the left here are all mock-ups that we've all seen out on the internet. And so, and they don't follow. You never see an actual physical print. I don't believe, we'll just keep going. I believe these are all mock-ups every single one of them. So in a way, when we're looking at this, because we, we're not really meeting the artist here, it does show you that, once again, this is a trending style of art, this black cottage core art. But let's go over to Sag Moon. I'll find uh, Sag Moon and, uh, oh, here we go. And we'll share this tab instead. Let's make sure that that really worked. Yeah, okay, there we go. So I did have it. Yay. All right. So here we go. I just uh, took a screenshot of the image and brought it over to Google Images. And sure enough, right away, there's her, there's their uh, um, item. 
and I was able to find their Wikipedia, not their Wikipedia, but a shop, the actual shop. So let me go down just on the right hand side so you can see because it's images, it's going to match up with all of the other images. So maybe your work falls in line with this and we can learn something from the artist that was selected that most identifies, according to Etsy now, most identifies with the art. Uh, <laughs> what's, what's our, um, the art admirer? <laughs> okay, I can't forget that. All right, the art admirer. Go back over here. Where are we here? Yep, right here. All right, so maybe, you know, keep going and going down and maybe you are out there and you're like, my art is just like this. Well, let's learn from Sag Moon Co. Let's definitely learn. So I'm going to uh, go to Sag Moon Paper Co. And they are on Etsy. They are on Instagram. So this goes into, you know, where else can you be found on the internet? If it's just Etsy, you might want to rethink that. They do have a 1,421 followers on Instagram. Sagmoon is also a blackownedassociation.com member, Sagmoon Paper Co. And, um, of course, all the images work, Bed Bath & Beyond offered as an eye canvas, their work called Willow Moon. So very interesting. It's a good idea to kind of take a look at who Etsy selected to represent this persona and all of the things. I do want to take a look at the Etsy, if you don't mind. We'll go ahead and come on over here to the Etsy and see if this gives you some ideas on how maybe you want to Represent on Etsy, Sag Moon. She's an artist. Ty Giles is the name. They are named Ty Giles. If you want to license the work, you have to contact them. And a very, very simple, lovely layout on her features here. And once again, we're going to go through this. And if there's anything about this art, it could be the necklace. It could be the top. It could be the background that would resonate with your work in your shop. And now it seems that, wait a minute, my buyer is really part of the art inspired persona. And this is what they are looking for when on Etsy. It's one way of looking at your shop, okay? It's one way. Layouts, fonts, attitude, your own portrait, how you represent your shop, all of these things, they so much matter. So we'll just stay there for just a moment and we'll stop sharing. Okay. So there we go, Sag Moon Co. Sag Moon Co. Let's go ahead and take a few little dips out of our very busy tabs today. All right, so that's the gift mode persona of the day, Etsy on X. We already did that today. Maybe we'll revisit that for just a couple moments, and then we'll get into our, our uh, thumbnail creation. Take a little bit of a break here. Thank you for listening and be back in just a couple moments.
this is not a great morning to have. And I do believe that a CEO that comes from some sort of inner strength and experience in their life deserves um, at least um, acknowledgement and understanding. This is how I feel about them. So that's the reality here. This is no matter what your shop is doing today, being that it is a publicly traded company, you want the stock to be healthy. You want to be able to see this trough of horror figure its way out. Maybe it does have to go to the superior lows. That is sub 40 before we see a flattening and then a rise back up. You do not want to see this stock return to pre-pandemic levels that are sub $10. You do not want that to happen. This is not a great morning to have. And I do believe that a CEO that comes from some sort of inner strength and experience in their life deserves um, at least um, acknowledgement and understanding. This is how I feel about them. So that's the reality here. This is no matter what your shop is doing today, being that it is a publicly traded company, you want the stock to be healthy. You want to be able to see this trough of horror figure its way out. Maybe it does have to go to the superior lows. That is sub 40 before we see a flattening and then a rise back up. You do not want to see this stock return to pre-pandemic levels that are sub $10. You do not want that to happen. This is not a great morning to have. And I do believe that a CEO that comes from some sort of inner strength and experience in their life deserves um, at least um, acknowledgement and understanding. This is how I feel about them. So that's the reality here. This is no matter what your shop is doing today, being that it is a publicly traded company, you want the stock to be healthy. You want to be able to see this trough of horror figure its way out. Maybe it does have to go to the superior lows. That is sub 40 before we see a flattening and then a rise back up. You do not want to see this stock return to pre-pandemic levels that are sub $10. You do not want that to happen. Okay, who is ready to build a thumbnail? Thank you for bearing with the break. Okay, who is ready? And we are live on YouTube. Okay, so what do we do? Well, we open up another window. That starts, that's where everything starts out. And we are already inside of the creator. I think. You guys know how to get here, right? And we will bring up, let's make sure that you guys know how to get to this place. I hope you do. So you wanna revisit the videos prior that get you into this space right here. This is where you have what you're building. You have your layouts up here. You have your color menu here. There's your title. 
and we do have to rename it because um, we have to go with the next persona. And then we have not applied it yet. And I did some interesting things that I'll share with you in just a moment. But we do have to find the persona that best kind of um, mimics this idea of black and white. Or we could do it this way too. Uh, because you do have to have, you have to kind of understand the black and white anyway. So, but let, let, me, be, let me be good to myself and, um, and go over to gift mode. And let's find another persona that is closer to, it could be the astrology expert. Let me just find one that's got quite a bit of, of uh, black and white in it. And the classic rocker. That might be good. The classic rocker. Okay. I think that's a good choice, the classic rocker. Right now, I'm not seeing anything that is tone on tone. There is the grandfather. That's tone on tone. So we have the classic rocker, the grandfather. And if I can't find another one of astrological, then the mathematician. Let's do the mathematician. I think that sounds fun. The mathematician. The mathematician. Okay. And we have a lot longer that I can go on the title today. The mathematician. And um, we want to take all this out here. Take that out and put here. The Etsy. The Etsy. Mathematician. Go here. And this, the Etsy mathematician persona. I don't think we have to say persona anymore, do, do we? And if, cal if our calculations are correct, these gifts are the answer and the thumbnail. Okay, so we have to do the subtext we don't really need. So we'll go ahead and take the subtext out. Oh, oh okay. You know what I'm going to do? Let me grab it again because we just need math, the word mathematician. Okay. All right. And thumbnail creation. So this is our thumbnail for tomorrow's episode. And our persona that we're going to focus on is the Etsy mathematician and thumbnail creation. So this is an interesting one that I did. First of all, we started off with the a red black, a red black. And that red black is, I'm going to put it over here on StreamYard. Oh, don't tell me. Don't tell me. Okay, I cannot do that again. I really, really can't. All right, so we're going to create a banner. And that is the font. Let me show that. That is the font of the base. The font of the base. And remember why we come to the base first? That is the base there in the background in the gradient, the darker black, the lighter black. This is the base in a full opacity right here. So it's all appears black, but it's actually a red black. And then the text only. And we know that it's a red black because we can come here. And if you're speaking about the blacks, we know that it is a red tone black because of the orbs that are here. Then there is the, this one is the wave pattern, the wave pattern. There's the concentric circles and the text only. So 
what I have done here is that I arrived at the at the blacks because of the you're going to notice my background. My background is a let's just remove this for just a moment. This background is a default background. I took a still picture of this background and I selected four of the blacks. I just went color picked all the way around it and I located all of the blacks that are in here. There are a few blacks that will only read as black inside of the StreamYard AI thumbnail creator. And then there are a couple of blacks that will read. One is a red black and the other one is a blue black, I believe. And so those are the two that we were able to use. So when I showcase the Go ahead and add this back up here. You will notice that the last layout, which is the Mobius flip layout with the multicolors, it's really the exact complement of the background default. And that's why we are using it. So as I come over here, and you guys are following me, right? As I go here, that this here was a screenshot. All I did was I took the title off, took the show date off, made a picture, and brought it into my pictures of you and your guests. Remember how yesterday I said you do not have to have these be classic portraits of human beings. They can be logos. They can be artwork. They can be shapes. Um, they can even be and I'll show you this now because we'll go here. They can even be Canva art. They can even be Canva art, which coffee time is coffee time is. We've asked for the outline to come in, but we'll take the outline off so you can see what happens to the Canva. Remember, the background has been removed. StreamYard did that, and very hard to see because it's on this gray on gray. You put the outline and now you can see it. But that is a Canva element, very easy to grab and bring over when you are looking at concepts, okay, which is this all this is just concept art. Take the show date off, and there we have there. Scroll down, and we'll go ahead and garbage can the little piece of Etsy, and now you can see maybe clear, more clear, that this is the fourth layout with the maximum of four people, but I can still use this and you get that background like that. So does that make sense to anybody? And as, the, as you move across, the one that I prefer is where I can see the AI background. I still get my Marilyn and I still get that little bit of difference in the background from taking a screenshot. And I have screenshots of every single one of the layouts without the title, without the show date, and no pictures of you and your guests, et cetera, et cetera. Take a look at the text only. We can see where it came from. And I'll rope it around again and again. I'll just come around again. There's the two people set up. This is the black ombre or black gradient, left to right. You can see the full opacity and how that layout and how that emphasizes Marilyn in the back. We might actually use this one for tomorrow's show. This is the max of four people. I don't so much mind that one either. The max of two people. I think this one or, uh, yeah, this one here looks nice. And then there's the text only. So it's really a difference between which one we want to use for tomorrow. And I'm looking at it on my iPad to see which one kind of shows up better. So we can kind of get an idea of what it will look like out in the real world on YouTube. And we know our color is 2B, 2B, 2B. We're not going for the show date and time. We have the two pictures. We know that we're all grayed out here. That's why we know we hit our max. And then we come, I have to lift up my window a little bit, I think. And I think I'm ready to apply. 
How does everybody feel about that? Oh, I know what I needed to do. I needed to uh, correct the uh, time. So we'll do that in just a moment. So we're going to go ahead and apply. And we have not uh, done oh, the name. Let's go ahead and download. That's the very first thing we do is download the thumbnail. We open up the thumbnail so that I can get the name of the show, the Etsy Mathematician. All right. And I want to make sure that I do this right. So let me just do the Etsy for here and here. And then I will correct this over on um, YouTube. The Etsy, the Etsy. It's a public stream. We're scheduling it for later. It's going to be scheduled for tomorrow, which is the 6th, for 12.55 p.m., 12.55 p.m., and we're going to create the live stream, or I can finish. See, I should have taken a copy of that, so I didn't do that. I don't want to misspell the mathematician. The Etsy mathematician and um, nail creation. Take that from here. Don't ever retype if you don't have to. And I think we're ready to go. It's going to YouTube. It's public, scheduled for tomorrow at 12.55 p.m. We've already downloaded it, and we get to create our live stream. Ooh, they want me to wait a minute. They want me to wait a minute. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Let me go ahead and get rid of some of this here. Oh, is that because I'm on a second window, guys? Is that because I should have I should have done this on another window? I meaning I was building it on another window. Let's try again. Create the live stream. Oh, we're good. The Etsy mathematician. the Etsy mathematician and thumbnail creation. So what I had done was I had taken over how to label it on my um, on um, my AI to get that different uh, different name, different title. Ugh. All right, another thing to remember. Okay, so we are on deck to go live tomorrow. I think we're good there. I think we can go ahead and X out of everything. I will change the label uh, probably overnight and you guys won't even notice it maybe <laughs> but right now that's what it's called okay let's grab the let's check it out here and go to brand and we're going to not add a background we're going to add an overlay And go to what should be a download. Go to my thumbnails. Let's see if we can find it. And here it is, thumbnail number 17. And open. And show. And that will be our thumbnail for tomorrow, the Etsy mathematician and thumbnail creation. It's a little juxtaposition there, I think. Okay, that does it for us today, guys. Thank you so much. Let's take a breather and I will um, come into my thank yous for everybody.
Thank you so much for stopping by, stopping your scroll, taking a moment to see what Beauty is up to. Tomorrow's persona deep dive is the Etsy mathematician and thumbnail creation for the next day. Uh, tomorrow we will not be looking at the Etsy stock. I may fill in a little bit something else that, that I find that might be of interest to you guys. I hope that we can find at least one a juicy moment um, that I shared today that I can make a clip out of. It's going to really kind of prove out like, man, oh man, she is boring. She can't even come up with one little, they can't even eke out one minute, 60 seconds of something that is exciting enough for us to listen to, for us to stop our scroll because beauty has said something incredible. I think maybe earlier on, I'll find something that's kind of cool to say. Um, about the CEO. Maybe I'll even have to re just go live again and try and, you know, be a little bit juicier for you guys. In any event, tomorrow's the Etsy mathematician thumbnail creation. I have no idea what we're going to be looking at tomorrow uh, as far as what the new thumbnail will be. I'll let you guys know all about it. Thank you so much, and we will talk to you guys soon. Bye bye now. This is not a great morning to have. And I do believe that a CEO that comes from some sort of inner strength and experience in their life deserves um, at least um, acknowledgement and understanding. This is how I feel about it. So that's the reality here. This is no matter what your shop is doing today, being that it is a publicly traded company, you want the stock to be healthy. You want to be able to see this trough of horror figure its way out. Maybe it does have to go to the superior lows that is sub 40 before we see a flattening and then a rise back up. You do not want to see this stock return to pre-pandemic levels that are sub $10. You do not want that to happen.